So a central tenet of Christianity is the Nicene Creed. The Nicene Creed is the creed or the profession of faith that is most widely used in Christian liturgy. It is called Nicene because in its original form it was adopted in the city of Nicaea by the first Eclum Ecumenical, Ecumenical Council. Uh, which met there in the year 325. The Nicene Creed has been normative for the Anglican Church, the Church of the East, Eastern Orthodox Church, the Oriental Orthodox Churches, the Roman Catholic Church, and according to Eastern Catholic Churches, the Old Catholic Church, the Lutheran Church, and many Protestant denominations, forming the eponymous mainstream definition of Christianity itself in Nicene Christianity. The Apostles' Creed, which in its present form is later, is also broadly accepted, accepted in the West, but is not used in the East. One or other of these two creeds is recited in the Roman Rite Mass directly after the homily on all Sundays and solemnities. So Nicene Creed is something like... Uh, we believe in one God, the Father, Almighty, Maker of all things, visit, visible and invisible. And in one Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, begotten of the Father. Uh, light of light, very God, of very God, begotten, not made, being one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made for us men, for our salvation came down, was incarnate, and was made man. He suffered on the third day. He rose again, ascended into heaven. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead, and in the Holy Ghost. So that's a little bit... A little different variations throughout the Christian world, but that that's the creed that they all say and that they all believe. So it's all about it's all Jesus. Um, sort of like the Islam religion is all about Muhammad. So the Jesus is the very central man in Christianity. Um, so the church teaches that through the passion, the suffering of Christ, the passion of the Christ, because Christ had suffered and his crucifixion as de depicted in the Gospels, all people have an opportunity for forgiveness and freedom from sin and so can be reconciled to God. The resurrection of Jesus, so the, the fact that Jesus died, he suffered, that offers uh, redemption and salvation. The reason why Jesus had died was for uh, our sins, for our, so we can be saved and so we can have salvation and reconciliation with God. The resurrection of Jesus gained for humans a possible spiritual immortality previously denied them because of original sin by reconciling with God and following Christ's words and deeds. An individual can enter the kingdom of God, which is the reign of God over people's hearts and lives. The Greek term Christ and the Hebrew Messiah both mean anointed one, referring to the Christian belief that Jesus' death and resurrection are the fulfillment of the Old Testament's messianic prophecies. So the Old Testament says that there's going to be a Messiah that's going to save everybody. The Islam believed it was Muhammad and Christians believed it was Jesus. And the Jewish people believe that there has not, the Messiah has not came yet. And so we are still waiting. So those are the three main differences between the Abrahamic faiths. 33% um, of the world's Christian, 20% is Muslim, and like less than 1% is Jewish. So Muslim and Christianity is the biggest, the two biggest faiths in the world. Um, Apostles. Catholicity. <laughs> According to the Catechism, the Catholic Church professes to be the sole Church of Christ, which is described in the Nicene Creed as the one holy Catholic and apostolic Church. An apostol apostolic Church. I always had. I don't think I ever said that word right. Apostolic Church. The Church teaches that its founder is Jesus Christ, who appointed the twelve apostles to continue His work as the Church Church's earliest bishops. The Catholic belief holds that the Church is the continuing presence of Jesus on earth and um, and that all duly consecrated bishops have a lineal succession from the apostles so all the consecrated bishops like came from the apostles I guess lineage lineal succession so that means they're related uh, particularly the Bishop of Rome, the Pope is considered the successor to the Apostle Simon Peter, from whom the Pope derived his supremacy over the Church. Simon Peter. The Church is further described in the Papal Encycl Encyclical Misti Corporis Christi as the mystical body of Christ. 
hard to read. Uh, the sacraments of the Catholic Church. According to the Council of Trent, Christ instituted seven sacraments and trusted them to the church. And these are baptism, confirmation, the Eucharist, reconciliation, anointing of the sick, uh, formerly called extreme unction, one of the last rites, holy orders, and holy matrimony. So that's, that's the seven sacraments of the Catholic faith. Um, sacraments are visible rites that Catholics see as signs of God's presence and effective channels of God's grace to all those who receive them with the proper disposition. The Catechism of the Catholic Church categorizes the sacraments into three groups. Uh, sacraments of Christian initiation, sacraments of healing, and sacraments at the service of communion uh, and the mission of the faithful. Sacraments of Christian initiation. There's three of them. Baptism, Confirmation, and Eucharist. So, baptism. As viewed by the Catholic Church, baptism is the first of three sacraments of initiation as a Christian. It washes away all the sins, both original sin and personal actual sins. It makes a person a member of the church. As a gratuitous gift of God that requires no merit on the part of the person who is baptized, it is conferred even on children who, though they have no personal sins, need it on account of original sin. If a newborn child is in danger of death, anyone, be it a doctor, a nurse, or a parent, may baptize the child. Baptism marks a person permanently and cannot be repeated. The Catholic Church recognizes as valid baptism conferred even by people who are not Catholics or Christians, provided that they intend to baptize to do what the church does when she baptizes, and that they use the Trinitarian baptismal formula. Confirmation, the Catholic Church sees the sacrament of confirmation as required to complete the grace given in baptism. So baptism is when the baby is brought into the Christian religion, and confirmation is when they get to be in their teenage years and they choose for themselves. When adults are baptized, confirmation is normally, normally given immediately afterwards, a practice followed even for infants in the Eastern Catholic Church. In the West, confirmation of children is delayed until they are old enough to understand or even until they're in their teens. In Western Christianity, particularly Catholicism, the sacrament is called confirmation because it confirms and strengthens the grace of baptism. In the Eastern Church, it is called chrismation because of the essential rite is the anointing of the person with chrism, a mixture of olive oil and some perfumed substance, usually balsam, blessed by a bishop. Those who receive confirmation must be in a state of grace for which those who have reached reach the age of reason means that they should first be cleansed spiritually by the sacrament of penance. They should also have the intention of receiving the sacrament and be prepared to show in their lives that they are Christians. Eucharist. For Catholics, the Eucharist is the sacrament which completes Christian initiation. It is the perpetuation of the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross and the banquet in which Jesus himself is consumed. The Eucharist sacrifice always includes prayers, readings from the Bible, consecration of wheat, bread, and grape wine, and communion by at least some of the participants, and particularly the priest in the consecrated elements, which by the, a consecration become, in a way surpassing understanding the body and blood of Jesus Christ, a change known as su transubstantiation. The ceremony in which a Catholic first received the Eucharist is known as First Communion. Two sacraments of healing are the sacrament of penance and anointing of the sick. Penance. The sacrament of penance, also called reconciliation, forgiveness, confession, and conversion, exhorts for the conversion of those who, after baptism, separate themselves from Christ by sin. Essential to this sacrament are acts both by the sinner, examination of conscience, contrition with the determination not to sin again, confession to a, tr a priest, and performance of some act to repair the damage caused by the sin. And the priest, determination of the act of reparation to reform and absolution. Serious sins, such as mortal sins, must be confessed within at most a year and always before receiving Holy Communion. While conf confession of venial sins also is recommended, the priest is bound under the severest penalties to maintain the seal of confession, absolute secrecy about any sins revealed to him in confession. Anointing of the sick. While... Charism is used only for the three sacraments that cannot be repeated, baptism, confirmation, ordination. A different oil is used by a priest or a bishop to bless a Catholic who, because of illness or old age, has begun to be in danger of death. 
This sacrament, known as the anointing of the sick, is believed to give comfort, peace, courage, and if the sick person is unable to make a confession, even forgiveness of sins. Although it is not reserved for those in proximate danger of death, it is often administered as one of the last rites. Sacraments at the com service of communion. According to the Catechism of the Catholic Church, there are two sacraments of communion directed towards the salvation of others, priesthood and marriage. Within the general vocation to be a Christian, these two sacraments consecrate a specific mission or vocation among the people of God. Men receive the holy orders to feed the church by the word and grace. Spouses marry so that their love may be fortified to fulfill duties of their state. Ordination. Ordination. So holy orders is a sacrament in three degrees or orders. Um, bishops, priests, and deacons with consecrating de depute some Christians to serve the whole body by these specific titles. So the or holy orders is when you become a priest, uh, a deacon, or a bishop. The church has defined rules on who may be ordained into the clergy. Uh, in the Latin rite, the priesthood and the diaconate are generally restricted uh, to celibate men. Men who are already married may be ordained in the Eastern Catholic churches in most countries and may become deacons even in the Western church. Uh, but after becoming a Roman Catholic priest, a man may not get married unless he is later formally lassiized. All clergy, whether deacons, priests, or bish bishops, may preach, teach, baptize, witness marriages, and conduct funeral liturgies. Only bishops and priests can administer the sacraments of the Eucharist, reconciliation, penance, and anointing of the sick. Only bishops can administer the sacrament of holy orders, which ordains someone into the clergy. Matrimony. Marriage, understood as an indissoluble union between a man and a woman, dissoluble, if entered into validly by any baptized man and baptized woman, is considered a sacrament by the Catholic Church. The Church does not recognize divorce as ending a valid marriage and allow state recognized divorce only as a means of protecting children or property with allow not uh, without allowing remarriage following such a divorce, apart from the requirements such as freedom of consent that is seized as applicable to all, the church has established certain specific requirements for the validity of marriages by Catholics. Failure to observe the church's regulations as well as defects applicable to all marriages may be grounds for a church declaration of the validity of a marriage, a de declaration usually referred to as an annulment. Judgment after death. The church teaches that immediately after death, the soul of each person will receive a particular judgment from God. This teaching also attests to another day when Christ will sit in the universal judgment of all mankind. And this final judgment, according to church teaching, will bring an end to human history and mark the beginning of a new and better heaven and earth ruled by God and righteousness. The basis of which each person's soul is judged is detailed in the Gospel of Matthew, which lists works of mercy to be performed even to people considered the least of Christ brothers. Emphasis is upon Christ's words that not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. According to the Catechism, the last judgment will reveal even to its further consequences the good each person has done or failed to do during his earthly life. Depending on the judgment rendered, a soul may enter one of the three states of afterlife. Heaven is a time of glorious union with God and a life of unspeakable joy that lasts forever. Purgatory is a temporary condition for the purification of souls who, although saved, are not free enough from sin to enter directly into heaven. Souls in purgatory may be aided in reaching heaven by the prayers of the faithful on earth and by the intercession of saints. So the only way purgatory you can get out of purgatory is by the prayers back at home and by the intercession of saints. So if the saints intervene. Final damnation. Finally, those who persist in living in a state of mortal sin and do not repent before death subject themselves to hell and everlasting separation from God. The church teaches that no one is condemned to hell without having freely decided to reject God. No one is predestined to hell. No one can determine whether anyone else has been condemned. Catholicism teaches that through God's mercy, a person can repent at any point before death and be saved. Some Catholic theologians have speculated that the souls of unbaptized infants who die in original sin are assigned to limbo, although this is not an official doctrine of the church. So...
Here's some rock holly. You like a hamster, swift gat and nine miller bangers. I don't mean to harass and pass past your conscience in a flash with no badge. Watch your life fight in front of you while I rob your stash. I remedy my existence by playing in the instant. Hard body resistance to many I'm an influence. Plus, I got a mistress who rides from the dusk and dig me up when I'm stuck.